and welcome to the show. Now, a little while ago, we did a 90s showdown. It was an early 90s showdown with a whole selection of wonderful sports cars. However, by the end of the 90s and into the early 2000s, there were still an awful lot of very, very interesting cars being made. Things like this VX220 Turbo, things like the Lotus Elise. Uh, you had BMW, you had the Z3, you even had the Z8. The NSX was still around, uh, as was the RX-7, or just about the end of the RX-7. Uh, but not only that, you also started to have this transition towards the super saloons. Well, nothing new. Yes, the Carlton had done it a while ago. These were becoming a lot more mainstream, much more practical than their sports car counterparts. You know, four doors. The RS6 was an estate car. Uh, <laughs> admittedly, sadly, we don't have it in Forza, but you had these much bigger, much more practical cars uh, that were very, very quick. So we decided to do a little showdown. What was going to be the best of the sort of millennium sports cars? So, for our first race with these vehicles, we've come to the Bamberg Coast Circuit. Now, my VX220 uh, probably won't be the biggest fan around this track. Uh, it's probably not going to be the worst car here, uh, but the Bamberg Coast Circuit does generally... I would say favour... If you have a power car it's going to work at a track, it's definitely going to work at the Bamberg Coast Circuit, is generally what we have seen. Now, the VX220 is not the power car in this field. The likes of the RS6, the M5, the M3, the Viper... I say power car, but they've got the top end speed. The VX220 doesn't. It's not too bad, let's not forget. The Z8 is kind of a curious one, actually. I'm interested to see where that's going to fit into to all of this. Um, you know, the 340R is going to outturn everybody, but we know it has no real top end. 340R could probably run away with everything here, depending on how it goes. Uh, let's oh, let's just wait and see. We can speculate, we can guess. The way to find out is to run the cars and see what happens. We actually get a pretty good start. We launch better than the BMW, but we launch better than the Z8 as well. Monaro is likely to be quite slidey. We know that much. I'm hoping the VX220 is going to be nice and planted. Could be a little twitchy. It's one of the, one of the things you can get with cars like this. And here we go. We are making the most of ghostly ghostly mode. I mean, I don't particularly like ghostly ghostly mode. However, it is what it is, pretty much. Oh, we're going to give Longbow a little bit of a boop coming out of that corner. What well, we got to the front of the race? The Elise, I think, is leading the way. So it's Elise followed by M5, followed by RX-7. Then there's the RS-6. I'm always slightly cheering on an RS-6. Not quite the right year, but, you know. Oh, I've got about the NSX. But yeah, that's, that's a good overall car. Yeah, you can never really go wrong with an NSX in Forza, in general, really. Uh, <laughs> We are going to be fighting our way through this section. I wonder if I can duck underneath the Z8 here. Not quite. So the RX-7 we know is a good handling machine, but uh, top end might be like that. Lotus is just buggered off at the front. The Elise is a million miles gone. I think the Viper was up with us and might go into trouble somewhere in this traffic. Here comes that NSX. My lack of top end hurts in the VX220. Uh, will the NSX want to try and sweep around the outside? It's going to want to try and sweep around the outside. Oh, I'm making a little bit of a push on that one. That was not quite what I was, go quite what I was going for. Uh, <laughs> okay, I might have lent too much. If I can find a way of letting it pass without causing complete mayhem, I shall, by virtue of uh, we pushed it out of the way. Oh, I'm going to end up making a bigger nuisance of myself. There's no really good place to do this. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to. We're trying to let him peg a go. I'm trying to let him peg a go without costing us all of the time in the world. But, uh, go on, there we go. Because, yeah, we lent on that quite a lot. There's always the danger going around the outside, but there's also a case of, like, basically lent on it until it went off the circuit. So, yeah, we'll, we'll let that one go. Um, now, can I... I've got to get underneath the Z3 through one of these corners here. The, Z, uh, the Z3 Coupe is a fascinating one. It's... It looks weird, but I like it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's a shooting brake, essentially, so of course I'm going to like it. It's got some speed! Bloody hell! It's got some top end on it. Uh, that's good about it. At the front, it's still being led by the Elise, although it looks like it's being catched by... Catched? Caught by the M5. The RS6 is uh, gradually falling through the field. Oh, I went to try and go... I saw problems befalling the Z3, and I went to try and, like, go around the outside of it, but it, it, it sort of twitched and caught itself. Unfortunately, I had nowhere to go in all of that. We've got a really good run. We might have to have a dive. Oh, have a big dive up the inside of the Beamer. The issue is I'm going to get this pass done and it's just going to outdrag me. The 340R is marred in battles with a Monaro. Uh, that's uh, <laughs> having a fun time battling away. Trying to find... Yeah, it might get clear of the Monaro, it might not. The M3's not having a great time either uh, further back there. Can we... We might. We should get the Z3 at the inside of these final corners. We do. Uh, that'll be the VX220 upper position. Uh, okay, the, the Elise is leading and that gap is staying around the two second mark. Uh, we're going to have a lap or two of clean air, so we can try and get a fast lap time in all of this. The RX-7's got back up to third in 
in this one, right? We're clear of the Z3. Now, I mean, we were always worried. The, the 340R is such a crazy quick vehicle in this game. I mean, it's filthy fast. We saw it when it was downgraded to B-Class. It just decimated everybody on a tarmac race when modified. From standard, we were worried it was going to do a similar thing. This circuit is not a 340R circuit. Um, as, a, as such, it normally thrives on, you know, the most technical of handling tracks. But, uh, yeah, it is not... It is stuck in a little bit of traffic with a Monaro and an M3, but not a huge amount in uh, in this one. This is a huge squabble going on up ahead as uh, the NSX is trying to join that battle. Uh, it's a shame that I'm not quite in that uh, in that group. I don't know whether I do quite have the pace. We're certainly not as fast as the Elise that's leading the way. We're losing about a second a lap to that one. I think it's rapid. I mean, we know the Elise is quick, but this was not a track I expected to see the Elise thrive at. You know, there's some much longer straights around here for a car like that with a lack of top speed, a bit like mine really, to, to be struggling at, but the Elise is gone. It's really third place is the big tussle between the RS6, the RX7, uh, whatever else is involved in all of that. I can't remember all of the cars. The NSX is in there and something Longbow's driving. Oh, the Z8. Z8's in there. I think the Z8 has fallen to the back of that group for now. Oh, come on. Come on, Vauxhall. I do like, I do like the way this car drives. And the VX220 is always a good option it's always a good option as a vehicle to build up for something for so A-class and so on. It's also always a good option for value for money in Forza. Pretty much this and the Monaro are about, about as good a value for money as you get uh, in the game. Uh, the gaps at the front, it's still very... I mean, it's not really changed between the Elise and the, the M5. They're basically just trading sector times. The M5 may be caught a little bit on this, the final lap. We may be catching the group ahead a smidge, but it isn't going to be... It's not going to be anywhere near enough. I think maybe we could have fought with that group. I think Impega is a little too quick for us, but certainly... Um, well, the NSX, the Impega driving is a little too quick for us. Certainly the likes of the, the Z8 and the RX-7, I think we could fight with. Didn't quite go our way in this race. We have run clear. The Z3 never really fell too far back. It was always, always there, always plausible as a threat. But we will cross the line. It's a seventh place for us. Could have been a little bit more. Was a lap time? Ooh, maybe not. Maybe not quite. Okay. Actually, lap time's very, very close between the top four. Four very different cars. Very, very close. We're a little bit further back uh, in that one, sadly. Okay. Let's see what the next race brings. So, for our next race, we come to a fairly different circuit. The Prince's Street Gardens circuit. So... We've got a street circuit. It is more technical than the previous track. I'm hoping the VX220 is going to do well around here. I've actually got quite a nice spot on the grid. The RX7 is ahead of us. We'll try to chase that down. The RS6 may come a little bit more undone around this track. There's some of the narrow points. We know the Z3's got some acceleration, but it's a bit of a handful. The 340R is behind us. Uh, NSX definitely one to watch out for. The M5 is a little further back again. M5 might be a little bit better suited than the RS6 around here. I would, I would think. And the Elise is going to be brutal. The Elise is at the back, but we know <laughs> the Elise was that fast around um, Bambra. It is going to be brutal. I would expect around here could be twitchy. There's one thing to bear in mind, of course, with those with those cars could be very, very twitchy. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, Voxel, how are you through the corners? It's pretty good. The RS6 actually done, has got a good a good jump in this one. Although this is the sort of section the RS6 isn't going to like. I'm a little bit blocked in by the RX-7. I didn't want to fight the street furniture. I didn't really have much choice in the matter in that one. There's a 340R lining up behind us. So we will outrun that down the straight. I bloody hope so. Anyway, if we don't, we're in trouble. I think the Elise is just going to come barreling past, given half a chance. Uh, what can we do about the big Audi here? The Audi, well, you can see how much the Audi's struggling compared to me and the Mazda through these corners. Um... Yeah, I'm not so... I think I've actually got the pace on the two cars ahead of me. I'm not so fussed about them, but it's the cars behind. What are they going to be able to do in this one? Oh, the RS6 is going to hit the wall through that. I mean, I understood quite why I did all of that. <laughs> we got very dangerously close to the wall, but we didn't hit it. The RS6 was just trying to carry the speed of the sports... Well, the much smaller sports cars, and it couldn't, it couldn't take that much speed around that corner. I need to clear this RX7, because if I don't, we're going to have... Well, Lotuses are battling one another. I mean, technically, mine's mostly Lotus, isn't it, under the VX220? I think it's mostly Lotus bits in here. Lotus bits with a Vauxhall badge on it. Now, we've got a good run out of the hairpin here. Does the Mazda know we're alongside? Not quite. Do we outstrip it down? Oh, it's really close between the RX-7 and me. The Elise is up to uh, third place now. Oh, Mazda's quite early on the brakes through there. I kind of want to be a little bit later. 
We get a good run on the exit, but this is such a narrow place to try and make a pass stick. You're always going to end up in trouble. The RX-7's just got no rear-end grip going on. Difficulty I've got at the moment is I've got, I've absolutely got the pace here. Uh, <laughs> we basically give the Mazda a push the whole way around that final corner. I've 100% got the pace on the Mazda. I've just got to try and find a way past, and that is not so easy. I'm better under brakes, and I have a little bit more mid-corner speed. But it's only a little bit, so to try to go around the outside is going to be super, super difficult, and that's not going to help my case. But the Elise isn't really reeling us in as fast as I was expecting it to here. Uh, we can uh, see again, the Mazda just can't turn as tight through that hairpin. The RX-7, no, the RX-7, the NSX, blah, many cars! Uh, are, are, are in this. It's currently... Oh, the 340R missed a checkpoint. That will drop it back. Let's put that one out of any contention. Uh, this is That's where I'm going to get it, I think. Next lap. Might not even need to be next lap, because we might get a good enough run here that we can force the issue. We are now fully alongside. I didn't want to go too wide here in previous laps, but this time around we can force the issue. It'll put the Vauxhall up to the front of the race. Now the good news for me is we've got a couple of laps to go. The NSX has still got two cars between it and me. So <laughs> if it can stay like that, I'm fairly happy. If we can keep the NSX, or just keep the NSX busy, because I feel like that's the biggest threat to me at the moment. Uh, the Lotus is quick, although we did see uh, we were able to keep it at bay a little bit. In fact, now it's busy fighting with that RX-7. This is very, very good news for the VX220. Now, the big cars are struggling more around here. The BMWs, the Audi, they are all further back, and they're all quite a long way off the bottom of this group. The Z8 is busy fighting with the uh, M5 at the moment over fifth place, and they look like they're having a hell of a battle. Yeah, they've fought each other so much back there that uh, we have managed to pull a nice big gap to them. That's a terrible corner. It's quick on the way in, I just not quite got the exit sorted. Uh, <laughs> come on, Vauxhall, you can do this. You can. You can absolutely do this, I think. Around the last corner of this lap, one more time around for my little VX220 Turbo. I'm liking this car. I'm really liking this car. And Pega's got that NSX up into third. Is now going to have the battle with the RX-7. I mean, I've got to just not do anything stupid, really. Even if that Honda is quicker, it's not going to catch that much in a lap. Not around a 30, uh, 30 a 50-second lap. Well, a minute lap, depending on if I have a good one or not. Uh, <laughs> right, don't screw up at the hairpin, please. Thank you, car. And now we... I say try and stay away. And Pega may have finally got that... Oh, something might happen to the Lotus. I don't know if you was a lot further down. So something went on with the Lotus. Something gave the Lotus some some trouble. It may have hit the final. It may have hit the wall on the outside of the final corner. Difficult to know in this one, but uh, there we go. The VX220 has got just two more corners to go. This track is much more like it. I might not have been any good at Bambara with this car, but around the street circuit. Impega is catching. That NSX is definitely faster over a course of a lap. However, <laughs> the VX220 is good. The Vauxhall is going to claim a victory. Yeah, fastest lap. Oh, no, the fastest lap's identical. Although, we all get beaten by the RS6. Amazingly, the RS6 did hit the wall. But uh, I mean, we're talking tiny, tiny, tiny fractions. I mean, it's very close between that time. The RX7 struggled a little bit in there. But I guess a good spot, a good, a good sort of start from that kept it out the front. I mean, we're all low 59s, low 59s, very high 58s, and well, there we have it. We claim a victory for the Vauxhall. So we move next to a drag race. We've done the circuit races. Now what is going to be the fastest down? I'm a little bit worried, I'll be honest, for my Vauxhall. It launches very well, but it doesn't have the power to compete with things like the RS6, to compete with things like the Monaro or the Viper. But it does launch very well, and it is at least very, very light indeed. Uh, Mid-pack is probably going to... I'm hoping we can get off the line. That's the important thing. Oh, uh, there's some desync with the start. Look at the Audi go, of course. That's the all-wheel drive launch. I'm not sure. Is that the Viper in the far end? The Elise is off! The Elise is actually pulling on the RS. <laughs> the Elise is ridiculous. Oh, it's a 340R that gets off the line crazy, and then I think that's going to die. There goes the Viper. The NSX is up through the middle. The Z8 is pulling away. The 340R has lost all sorts of speed, and we come across the line uh, with the, a sixth place. Now, we saw the start is a little bit desynced, so these the times are correct, so the order here is correct, but the desync at the start means the actual position on track is incorrect. The Elise wins, and the Elise actually pulled on the RS6. 
after the launch. That's crazy. Uh, then we have the Viper, the Z8 Monaro. The VX220 is all about the launch, uh, but it does come in, in sixth head of the NSX, the M5. Uh, not, I thought the M5 was going to be a little bit faster uh, down here. Ahead of the uh, Spirit R, the M3. Uh, then we have the Z3. I'm surprised that the Z3 is quite quick in a straight line. The Lotus, good launch, but no top end at all. The next challenge for these cars is the 0 to 100 to 0. I always like this as a challenge. It tests its launch, acceleration, but it's also testing braking and the VX220, well, it is very light. The launch is good. It doesn't quite have the power that you would ideally like, so getting to 100 is a little bit more difficult. Thankfully, it does do it in third as we jump on the brakes and it comes, it comes to a stop very quickly indeed. I have wandered slightly, not really what we want. The Elise has been astonishing so far. The fact that that won the drag race is not how we thought. We knew it'd be good in the circuits, but not in the way that it is, and I'm worried about it. Yeah, <laughs> it's better than mine. At least the Series 1 Elise is seriously bloody fast. The Z8, we know he's got more power. It is bigger and heavier, sure, but it has got more power, and it was quite fast in the drag race. What are we going to see in terms of 0 to 100? No, it's on the brakes. It can't match the uh, can't match the Lotus, but sadly does beat my, well, Vauxhall. It's it mostly, lo mostly Lotus going on with the VX220, but regardless, it's still quite good. The M5, Again, much bigger, much heavier this one, uh, but a good run for the BMW, and it does come to a halt uh, even before that of the Lotus. That is a very good run, actually, from the BMW. Uh, the Z3 up next. This thing has some good straight lines, too. We saw it at Bamboo, it was quite fast. Uh, down the straights, but it's not quite got the braking uh, to match. So I'm not last, at least, with the Vauxhall. The RX-7, this is not a test for the RX-7 that's going to particularly enjoy. It's one of the slower cars here uh, down the straight, unfortunately. A beautiful car, but it's not going to be its favourite test, and that comes to a halt, although, interestingly, it does beat the Z3. It doesn't beat the Vauxhall, but it's still a pretty good run from that uh, from that man. So the Monaro, wonderful car. I love the Monaro. Lots of power in this thing. Yes, it's quite big and heavy, uh, but a good sort of acceleration. It's not bad. It doesn't beat the M5, but it is stopped quicker than that VX220. What have we got next? The RS6, the only all-wheel drive car in the field. That's going to help it with the launch. Yes, it's very heavy, but it's got really, really good launch. It gets stopped. Doesn't beat the M5 or the Lotus. Again, a very good run. The RS6 has been, has been doing well, not that I'm biased in any way, shape, or form. We then have the terribly coloured uh, M3 that uh, is still going. It's actually, is it starting to slow down? Yes, it has gone on the brakes. That's not good. <laughs> That's really not... It just didn't get to 100. It got, sort of got going okay, but it just didn't really get there. The Viper's likely to be good at this one again. Lots of power. Admittedly not greatest in the world in traction front, but uh, plenty of power. It's on the brakes, and it will stop very close to the RS6. It has wandered a little bit, but uh, yeah, we'd expect the Viper to be Fairly decent when it comes to all of this. Then we have the NSX. Good all-round car. You can't really go wrong with an NSX. I mean, that's, that's really true of it. It's just a good round car everywhere. Uh, this one. That is on the brakes. Doesn't quite get stopped sooner than the Viper. It's a good showing. It's a good showing. It's right up there. It's just ahead of the Z8 by the looks of it. And then we have the 340R. This test not going to be good for the 340R. Very good handling. We know how filthy fast it can be on Forza in general, but this is not the, really the test for <laughs> 40 yards. <laughs> Despite brushing the wall and losing a little bit, it's still better than the uh, M3. BMW did not. The M3 just really, really struggled in all of that one. They really didn't didn't particularly enjoy that test. So we'll go for the flyby. And it is the M5. Kind of surprising in some ways. It's a good, very good showing from the M5 that will take victory. And we have that mighty Lotus. The Lotus has been phenomenal throughout all of this. Uh, that is ahead of the next pairing that are very, very close together. Uh, very close indeed between the RS6 and the Viper. It's going to go slightly in favour of the Audi on this one, but it is very close. Uh, we then have another very close battle here between the NSX and the Z8. That would go the way of the BMW, but again, they are quite close. I mean, this spread here is actually close between all of these vehicles. The Monaro, uh, again, does beat out my VX220. Uh, again, we're only talking small margins here. We then have the RX7 just narrowly beating the Z3M. And then comes a big gap. I'm pretty sure the gap between the BMW Z3 and the other two over here, <laughs> the 340R and the M3, I think that gap is bigger than the gap between my, between the Z3 and the M5. These two just, just didn't have... I mean, they didn't really have the pace in in various positions around this around this race, if you like. It just didn't quite work for them. It's a, it's a huge gap. Kind of surprising, but... That is that is the way that it's uh, the way that it goes. So we are on to the leaderboard, and it is the Elise that wins. 
we knew the Elise would be good at the twisty circuits, there's no doubt about it. What was surprised all of us is just how fast that damn thing was in a straight line. The top end that car had that you just don't expect was ridiculous. Uh, it, it really was very, very quick. Um, to be able to beat the RS, to be able to start behind the RS6 in the drag race and then catch and pass it before the end, no one was expecting that one. The RS6 and M5 do get second and third, so as far as the practical, very fast cars go, yeah, they were quite quick. Both of them are bigger and heavier, especially the Audi, but they were quick enough. And they were quick enough around the circuits, not so good at the very, very twisty stuff, but they were quick around the circuits. The next group of cars, I mean, we are talking, there's one point between the RS6 and the M5. There is also two points between the NSX, the Z8, and my Vauxhall. The Vauxhall, the twisty of the circuit, the faster the Vauxhall goes. The NSX is good everywhere, the Z8 is a bit better at the sort of straight line speed stuff. A good little fight between all of them, and I really enjoyed driving the, the VX220. We then have the RX7, uh, just beats out the Viper, the Monaro in ninth place. Not so good around the corners, but uh, fairly good on the straights. The Z3 is down in 10th. Had some top end, but just wasn't as good enough overall. The M3 seriously struggled, as did the 340R, just for a lack of any sort of straight line speed. They just couldn't, couldn't really compete in all of this. So, there we have it. As far as conclusions go, well, that Lotus is monumentally quick. There's nothing more to say about it. <laughs> I think I think it could probably have won the street circuit had it not had a sort of a lower spot on the grid. That thing was ridiculous. The big saloon cars actually did better than we thought. We thought they may struggle some more. Yes, we thought they'd be quick in a straight line, but uh, they held their own. They held their own. They scored good points, even in the twisty stuff, uh, that uh, would keep them ahead. You know, the NSX, the Z8, the Vauxhall, we were all very close together. It was a good fight. I like the VX220. It's a lovely car to drive. Quite exciting. Um... Yeah, in the end, it went slightly the way to the NSX. The, the, the Honda is just good overall. The RX-7 held its own, despite being one of the kind of slow, certainly less powerful cars overall. Uh, good handling, but no top end. Uh, I will say, in in all fairness, uh, and of course, absolutely no offence intended, but uh, the Viper should probably have been further up on on this one. Driver struggled a little bit with it around the around the circus, getting the speed out of the car. Uh, so it's a little bit out of position, the Viper. Um, but there we go, that is that is how it goes. I'm kind of in some ways most surprised by the 340R. We were concerned the 340R would just thrash everything because it is such a good handling car. When modified, that thing is unbelievably quick in Forza. But in a stock form against these cars, yes, it was lower PI, but it just had nothing. It had absolutely nothing uh, to give. So a little bit of surprise on that one. But uh, there we go. That is going to be it for this video. Thank you all very much for watching. And until next time, a uh, goodbye.